All right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from sunny San Diego. And today, I'm delighted to welcome from Seattle to Washington, uh, Celine Analon Brozovic. How are you doing, Celine? Bonjour. Uh, and bonjour. hi, John. I am doing fantastic. We've solved the accent issue now. It's French. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, uh, well, I think bonjour is uh, merci is for the limit of my French these days. So we'll we'll keep it in English for the rest of the interview. And uh, Celine's the founder and CEO of Bay Kenji Health. Uh, she is a team optimizer. Spent more than twenty five years as a top achiever in telecommunications and healthcare IT for Fortune ten plus companies. Uh, and then you left technology to start talking about mental health in the workplace. And what we're going to talk about today is not just mental health, but total health in the workplace and how that plays a role in not in retention, but also in people excelling in the workplace. Um, Celine, just to get, get started, right? I don't think everybody understands what total health means. And, and I'm, I'm a huge believer in mind-body too. Uh, and I think people often miss that piece too. But it, it just um, start off by giving a definition of what you mean by total health. Thank you very much, John. Really appreciate. Total health is very simple. It's both your physical health and your mental health. Usually, when we're talking about our physical health, high blood pressure, and, uh, cholesterol, we forget the mental aspect. And when we're dealing with mental health, we are focused on just mental health and the two of them are intertwined. So we want to talk about total health for the total individual. Did I answer that question for you? Joe? Oh yeah, yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And, uh, and you're correct because uh, you know, we're, we're traditionally certain in, in, you know, Western medicine is you know we go if i have a physical ailment i go to the gp the general practitioner whatever if i have mental problems i go to a psychiatrist or counselor and rarely if ever do those to communicate so i separate so it's almost like we we force this separation on ourselves that's kind of arbitrary right very 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 we are whole we are full so when we talk about our health we should nurture both the physical mm -hmm. and the mental. Yeah, and and traditionally, even in work, uh, I mean, there's been a lot of health initiatives over the year, like over the years, and people are like, oh, here's gym memberships for everybody. Here's like healthy eating plans, but rarely does anything ever talk about mental health because there's still a kind of stigma around that. I think. I mean, if I tell you, oh, Celine, like, look, I broke my leg. You don't immediately think, well, John, you must have weak bones uh, and think of me differently. You just go, oh, well, that's that's unfortunate. But if I say to you, well, I'm, I'm kind of suffering from anxiety and a bit of depression, then you start to go, oh, you look at me differently. Suddenly, I'm not quite a whole person. Which is a shame. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let me set the stage a little bit here. When we talk about mental health, we have to look at two different aspects. We have the mental well-being, where mentally, either I could be stressed, I could be a little bit sad or happy or whatever it is. And then we have the mental diseases. And when it comes to the mental diseases, it's unfortunate that we as people shame people with mental illnesses. The same way somebody has diabetes or high cholesterol or cancer and we show compassion, we should do the exact same thing with somebody with mental illness. At the end of the day, that person did not go to the store and say, hmm, which one of that do I want? Is it the depression or is it the bipolar or is it? No, no. So we shouldn't be, we shouldn't shame this type of person. It's yeah, a disease. And, yeah. And I think, uh, and I think Celine, a large part of this is that we don't know how 
to, we, we just don't know how to react. People aren't taught how to react, even managers and companies, how to react if somebody has, you know, a mental, mental illness or a disease. As you say, we kind of run away from it and we think it's, uh, I don't know whether we think we can actually catch it, but uh, definitely run away. <laughs> Yeah, uh, because people are not familiar with that. And also, as I, as I was telling you, the shame that has been in mm -hmm. there from generations. So uh, managers are not very equipped to deal with them. They're not even equipped to deal with mental well-being, let mm -hmm. alone mental illnesses. So as part of my work, I try to educate managers that you can deal with mental well-being and you can also deal with mental illnesses because mental well-being that are not properly addressed could lead somebody to mental illnesses mm -hmm. and somebody could be mentally ill and be functioning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and does it and I think another another part of it too is that we celebrate stress in the workplace. You know, it's a sign of, you know, I'm so committed, like I'm so stressed out because I'm so committed. And obviously a little bit of stress is a good thing. You know, we need some motivation and all of that and keep ourselves like on track. But I think it's gotten out of control where we just, we, we celebrate that stress and we don't realize that stress is a gateway to other things. Yes, you got it. Stress is a gateway to other things excess stress, stress that is not being dealt with properly. And that is a very nice segue to share the six pillars of lifestyle medicine. Lifestyle medicine is that branch of medicine growing that tell us <clears throat> that by managing our lifestyle, we can prevent and reverse those chronic diseases and also strengthen our mental health from even mental well-being or even mental illnesses. So the same lifestyle that you are using to deal with cholesterol, to deal with obesity, the same lifestyle is extremely helpful for your overall mental health. So quickly, let me revisit those six pillars and we can Please. drill into them. Nutrition, basically what you choose to put in your mouth. Food alcohol, drug, tobacco. Two, your mind and your soul. Do you have a stress management practice? Do I Do personally you have a stress management practice? I am yeah. asking people who are listening. It is so important. Without mm -hmm. a good stress management practice, without a good relax relaxation practice, it should be part of your well-being. What are you doing to relax? Mm-hmm. Three, do you know what your mission in life is? Four, what are you doing with your body? Are you sleeping? Do you have access to the sun? Are you exercising? Five, how connected are you with yourself and with other people? What is the level of forgiveness that you have? And six, finally, what environment do you live in? As you can see, stress is as important as exercise and is as important as nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, no, those are, those are fascinating. And, and uh, you know, the, the nutrition is it, one is probably the most, uh, most obvious one, uh, you know, that most people can get their head around. But I think the, I liked the second one here, I think is when you said, what do you do? for stress management. And I think that's missing from most people's lives. I like personally, for me, it's martial arts, because I tell you, you try thinking about other things when you're doing martial arts, it's not going to end well. So it's a great way of, uh, it's a great way of clearing your mind of all the clutter. That's right. But I don't think other people do. I mean, I use that personally myself. I don't think a lot of other people actually think that they need a stress management or, or a stress release uh, process or, 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 or habit. Yeah. And actually, John, before we even go on that stress, you made a statement, and I'm curious. You said when it comes to nutrition, people have their heads around it. Oh, I didn't mean that they, I don't mean that they execute on it, but I think 
they I think people are more aware maybe that they should look after their nutrition, but I don't but I'm not saying people do. So maybe um correct me if I'm wrong. If you think that there are things that people are are overlooking, please do tell me. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was listening to Dr. Uh, Tim Spector, I think he's a professor, who said, we do not have a nutrition problem. We have a food problem. Mm. Yeah, People a- don't know. You, Everybody and their brother is an expert in that. The amount of things that we call foods that are not food, that people consume, it's mind boggling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a, that's a really good. That's a, that's a really good. That's a that's a really really good point. Um, uh, but I, I'm just saying, as I I think people are probably a little more open to hearing about things like that. The other ones, I think, when you start to get into it, it's like mission. I love what you just said about mission, purpose, and mission. I think this is massive thing missing in most people's lives that we don't know why we're doing what we're doing. We're on like this hamster wheel. We're doing it maybe from a sense of obligation. Maybe we're just doing it to, to support our families, but, but, but we still aren't, aren't figuring out why, why we're doing, why we're here. You know, what is this all about? And I think there's a huge gap. There's a real void there. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, That mission in life our purpose in life and if you are a good manager you want to ensure you have conversation with your employees especially the younger generation because this is a generation who wants Mm -hmm. to be in tune with their life purpose their mission in life i recall a couple of years ago uh, some person one person that i know a computer uh, programmer and I had a job offered from Boeing. And I asked that young person, are you going to take it? She's like, no, I have to ask them first. What are they going to do with my codes, with my programming? If they're going to use it for weapons, no, I'm not working there. This gen- young generation have a set of values and they want their job to be in sync with their core values. Mm-hmm. They, do, they want to always be perfectly in sync they don't think that there is one of them at work and there is one of them outside. So if you are a good manager and you want to retain those employees, come down, have a conversation with them and understand if what you are asking them to do is in sync with what they believe is their mission in life. Mm-hmm. No, and I, I think that's a really important thing. And I think it's important from two points of view. I think it's important from the employer and obviously in the employee, because it may not just be a fit. And you're better off like if, if there isn't if there isn't a fit. And one of the other ones you said is, what are you doing with your body? Mm-hmm. Explain that to me a little bit more. So what are you doing with your body? Are you exercising? Are you sleeping? Do you have access to vitamin D to the sun? So let's do the vitamin D. It's proven vitamin D is important for you, for you, for your whole health. Actually, for mental health, when it's dark, like it is right now in the Pacific Northwest, there is even something called seasonal affective disorder Mm -hmm. that is linked to the lack of sun, the Mm -hmm. darkness out there. So you want to get your vitamin D. Uh, uh, I am not a medical doctor, so I cannot tell you the quantity. Talk to your medical providers. Uh, To my customers, Mm -hmm. I just give them uh, something. The second thing is, how are you sleeping? Are you sleeping enough? And what is the quality of that sleep? If you are not sure, if you are snoring, make sure you don't have sleep apnea blocking your nasal passages creating more problems. Sometimes you do not lose weight because you are not sleeping properly. Both of them are intertwined. And finally, are you exercising? And when I say exercise, I don't mean, are you becoming a gym rat? No, I am talking about, are you moving your body? Are you taking those 30, 40 minutes walk every day to breathe fresh air? And to move that body, to get that blood flowing, you Mm -hmm. do not have to be a gym rat to exercise, to get movement. Go outside, walk. 
go up and down the stairs, do something, but the couch is not where you mm -hmm. want to be all the time. Yeah, I had a, I, yeah no, and I, and I'll just give you an example. I had a great interview a couple of years ago with a gentleman who he was uh, extremely. He had originally been extremely overweight, couch potato, or whatever, and he just decided one day that he wanted to make a change. So he decided, I'm going to run a marathon. Right? Okay. So fair play to him. That's a great goal to set. But what he did was he got up the first day and he walked five minutes the second day he walked seven minutes and except and now he's completed marathons but he did it the right way he didn't go because that's how most people unfortunately the setbacks because we we go we set a too lofty a goal and we try to get too much done at once and then we give up because it's too hard yeah yeah we have an african proverb that says a child doesn't walk until they crawl uh, very good. Yes, yes, yes. I like I like that a lot. And um, and and just the you know the the uh, and you mentioned the environment that you that you're in. I think that's another critical one because um, you know when people hear environment, they they nowadays they just think of like the outside and all of that kind of stuff. But environment obviously includes your physical location. It also includes who and what you surround yourself with too. Right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, this, we can handle that into the connectedness, but your mm -hmm. environment is, where do you live at the end of the day? Do you have access to fresh air? Are you in a place that is polluted, chemically polluted? Do you have access to transportation? For some people, it's a lot of stress. Look at what we have here. Sometimes we have to do two hours commute to come, two hours in the car, increase the level of stress. Oh, yeah. Do you have do you live in a place that is so noisy that you cannot think properly? That environment plays a big role on your health. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then obviously you mentioned the connectedness piece. This is I think this is an incredibly challenging one, particularly nowadays, because you know, we're told all the time that we're we're the most connected uh, people ever, right? But we're not. We're the most disconnected people ever because we we're so distracted. We're 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 so uh, everything is in a everything has to be immediate. It has to be like you know no attention span. All of this and and many people I feel have lost the ability to develop meaningful connections because of this so-called connected world. Yes. We have lost that connectedness. We have lost our tribe. We have lost mm -hmm. our communities. And we even have lost our connection to ourselves. Yes. Be here now. We don't know how to do that anymore. We want to multitask. We have the phone here, the music he playing in the room here, other people. We have to come back to basics. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely, and and you know, and you know, uh, you know, from your heritage background, you know, African, um, how how important like community and storytelling and sharing and all. Same with my you know, my Irish background, we have very long tradition of that, and we're losing that sense of community, but community in a you know, people that we can reach out and touch uh, rather than this idea of, of this digital community of people spread all over everywhere, which isn't, which is nice, obviously, and you can do nice things with, but it's, it's not the same because you're not building the core at a local, at, at, you, at the very micro level that can spread out. Yeah. And, and that is, has been demonstrated. We have six zones in the world that are called the blue zones. What where people live longer and healthier. One of the things they have in common is that community, that connectedness, first with the family and with their neighbors. They eat mm. meals together, they actually eat meals together, they do things together, they support each other. And we are losing that every single day and we have to try to bring it back and when we are in the office because here we're talking yep. to managers and stuff you mm -hmm. can build that community and you start with trust yeah yeah no i, I agree with you and i think that's a great way if people start if people sort of pull back a little and stop i always say to people you know stop focusing on big global issues and you know pontificating about them because generally speaking you can't affect them 
But what you can do is you can be the best manager. You can be the best coworker. You can be the best spouse, partner. You can be the best parent, neighbor in your community. That makes a real tangible difference in people's lives. Sitting in your backyard with a beer in your hand, talking about global issues, do, you know, may make you feel good, but it doesn't actually impact anything. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, I'm not again sitting in the backyard drinking beer. I'm just saying like that shouldn't be your exclusive uh, approach. So listen, um, Sitting, this has been fantastic. Uh, and all of your information will be below this video. But before you go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. So what I do is I talk to leaders and owners of businesses who wants to increase retention of their employees and tell them that as part of that strategy, a good, solid wellness program should be part of it. 45% of customers in medium enterprises state that wellness is part of the reason why they stay. So why mm -hmm. don't you have a good wellness program? I am not talking about some computer screens where you check off a few things. No, do a wellness program where you hold the employees mm -hmm. by the hand and you really teach them ways of changing that lifestyle so they get results that are sustainable. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love I love the work you're doing because that's it. If you do those programs like you're talking about properly, it's um, it's a shared thing, which we're talking about community. But also it's we need to be we need someone to hold us accountable. Right. It's a big difference. Let's face it. If I say I'm going to run a marathon and I and I agree with a friend, we're going to do it together. Therefore, we can. You know, each of us can keep each other motivated when we don't feel like training because you don't let the other one down. And I think that's the same with wellness in the workplace is, you know, it gives us an opportunity to kind of hold each other accountable in a, in a positive fashion. Yeah. And it is so important. Here is another statistic. I am an engineer, so I love mm -hmm. numbers. There is a research that shows that employees who are not in good health, Seth report a 46% decline in productivity. Mm. Let me translate this one for you. What it means is you are paying somebody and you're just getting half. <laughs> what kind of investment is that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a fantastic. What a great point to end on. So, you know, I love that one. Yeah. So if they're if they're if they're sick and they're only getting half, you're paying you're paying full price for half of the product. Um, so listen, um, thank you again for today. As I said, all Celine's information will be below here. And thank you for watching and listening. Thank you very much, John. And I really appreciate it. It's a real privilege being here. Oh, privilege is all mine. Thank you. Yeah.